So this is the only match where when I saw the two deck lists, I actually did not favor Gruul. And it was entirely because of those three Doom Whispers that are in the deck. I feel like having a way to survive against Gruul, especially in game one, is super key. But it looks like Gruul is on the play. Marcio getting to go first during this game is going to make a huge difference. Yeah, going first is good. Main problem with this hand is the lack of a two drop. Um, a one drop or a two drop. Actually, I think this hand replacing any either of the free drop and one drop would be perfectly fine. Uh, but without one, it's kind of slow. Uh, I mean, playing Mamma for Spellbreaker on turn three is fine, but you're giving your opponent a lot of time, and that's why Marshall's considering on the draw. This would be an automatic mulligan on the play. It's a lot closer. Um, I would lead towards mulliganing. And it seems like Marcio agrees. This hand looks way better. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is a very nice hand. You got Lanmore Elf on turn one into doubles, on doubles, Gruul Spellbreakers. That's fantastic on turn two and three. And uh, looking at Ray Sato's hand, it is kind of slow. You have the tap land and the fabled passage. Uh, both players kind of hovering over that keep button. There we go. Yeah, keep because you still get to play Fotsies on turn two, which can cut the curve. Marshall puts a land, which is good, right? There's no fatal pushes to worry about, so this Llanowar Elf is probably going to be a mana source for as long as it needs to be, and Mamoth can be a mana source down the line if it needs to. If you're if you're going to draw a bunch of spells, yep. If you end up with three lands or three mana sources, you just need a fourth to cast Collected Company. Then the Mammoth will do just fine, but actually it looks like leading with the Mammoth, hoping for a land draw rather than going for the speedy damage. So we've got three rioting creatures in hand, Riot being that you can choose between haste and a plus one, plus one counter as it enters the battlefield. Yeah, and generally haste is the way to go. <laughs> the bash. Um, yeah, this likes to play the Mammoth because it doesn't have haste. Uh, it deals as much damage as Spellbreaker eventually. And or in, more, in this scenario, because there's a land drop. Yeah. Right. And in this scenario, you get to play Spellbreaker, you get to, to play the Mammoth. The only consideration here is something like Extinction Event, because the board is extremely weak to that card. But in this spot, if you play uh, the uh, Kazandu Valley and then play Spellbreaker, that would be that, that would have been nine damage overall. But uh, this is where why you see this from Marcio. Maybe hedging against Extinction Event down the line. Now, like this diversification of odd and even mana costs. They might, this might be also a way to maximize the amount of damage uh, without running into interactive cards from Ray. As it turns out, Ray's hand is extremely slow. Uh, Fable Passage doesn't come into play untapped. Uh, might even miss the bonus land drop from this Explore. And, it, I mean, if Ray's deck stumbles... Uh, the Gruul deck is just going to take over. And Marcio being on the play, I think, in a relatively favorite matchup, especially with the stumble here, I think that's Oof, just going Yeah, you're really hoping to get a land that would come in untapped, allowing for the chain into the growth spiral here. Uh, unfortunately, this is just a fabled passage, which is going to be able to find a tapped basic land. And <laughs> against, like, th this is a known Gruul spellbreaker and a collected company as a potential play. So do you go for the guaranteed damage with the Gruul Spellbreaker, or do you risk it for the biscuit and play Coco? I, I don't think you take any risk. At this point, Marso just has to wonder, how do I lose this game? And you lose this game by having collected company get zero cards. So you might as well just play the Spellbreaker. Uh, in, in my view, it's, it's actually... It, it, you know, you're extremely favored. This is just locking up the game. And the only way you can lose is collect the company not working. It's very unlikely with Marshall's build. But why take the risk? The only card you can lose to is really Extinction Event. So, and, and by playing Spellbreaker, you win against that card. Yep, not going for the greedy play there. Just getting the guaranteed 10 damage in. And now... Oro is not going to change this game state very much, especially with one land in hand and it's daft. Raisato knows that this is a done first game, and they're going to move into sideboarding. Yeah, that one copy of Language is pretty much Ray's best card in this matchup. Everything else is okay-ish or bad, <laughs> like Tales End, I think, should come out. Um but yeah, uh, Languish is like one of the only cards that deals with multiple permanents on the board unconditionally, really. 
Extinction event will often deal with parts of the board. Cry of the Carnarium won't deal with the, the toughest creatures. I mean, it comes in, but it's not as good. Um, yeah, so I'm a little surprised that Tilzens are still there. They do deal with Clofus, uh, God of Destiny, Questing Beast, and Embercleave. That seems way too conditional because you need to have the two mana up to, to deal with it. And once those cards are in play, the Tilzen does nothing. So I would actually probably prefer Fotsies. Or even Hydrate Crisis, just because those cards are a little more proactive and Foxies can cut the curve. Yeah, and Embercleave usually comes out or at least gets reduced in quantity up against Saltai. That's exactly what we saw during sideboarding. So it's even fewer targets for that tail's end. Ooh. But Aether Gust is anti gruel propaganda, and that's going to do a lot of work this match. The the big thing is that copy of Languish in hand, just the, the one of in Ray's deck, and again, the best card. Plus spot removal to buy time if needed, but Marso's hand is a little slower, so uh, Marso's hand is actually pretty vulnerable. Uh, but thankfully, draws a, a free drop. Drawing a two drop here would actually make a, a world of difference. As long Anything as to as beef up that pelt collector would be good, but no, this is just a one-one attacking. Yeah. Yeah, Castle Lockwing can't come into play untapped. Uh, and as Cry of the Carnarium is fine, you probably might, you might actually just cast it in this spot, but you get to keep up Aphergust, Heartless Axe, it's not so bad. Third mana and a Gruul Spellbreaker entering the battlefield, or potentially getting gusted. Once it's hit the battlefield, it can't be gusted though, because it has Hexproof until the end of turn. Yeah. It is tempting to Aphergust this to prevent the Pelt Collector from going. You could Aphergust the Pelt Collector, since that card would have virtually uh, no value put on top, so just get rid of it. Um, if Marcio puts a counter on Spellbreaker, it is immune to Heartless Act. Not Aphergust, but it is immune to Heartless Act. A card, there are two of, but not Eliminate as a result. So I think Marcio is going to prioritize getting the free damage in in this spot. But you can see it's a consideration. It, it is actually close just because of playing around cards. But I think the guaranteed free damage in is just worth it. I'm swinging in for five damage. The Gust and Heartless Act not making any moves. The Heartless Act is now able to take out the Gruul Spellbreaker. But that is a card that gives protection against so many different angles. Gruul Spellbreaker I used to run in aggro decks because of its protection from Settle the Wreckage. And it's still showing how good it is in today's meta. I mean, it's just a hefty beater. But interestingly, Ray did not use the Aphergus. Probably wants to squarely aim it at something like Chandra Torch of the Fiends coming out of the sideboard. Because there's a lot of anti-creature cards in hand. So probably prioritizing being able to rid of something like a resilient threat of that nature. Chandra Torch of the Fiends, Clofus God of Destiny. There's not really answers to those cards. So maybe, again, prioritizing Aphergust on something like that. So we saw Castle Lock Twain come down over Zaga Triumph. Both cards do enter tapped this turn. I feel like there isn't that much consideration to put toward cycling the Triumph, and Triumph would have enabled the Castle Lock Twain to come in next turn on tapped. Do you think that that was maybe a misjudgment, not realizing that the castle would come in tapped, thinking, oh, I can cast a Languish next turn? Um, generally at this slow, I, I, it's, it's harder to spot these things be, in the sense of, I, I like to think that it might have been different, but I believe you're just correct here. The, the castle couldn't have play, come into play untapped because Drowned, maybe I'm, I'm looking at the mana base. Drowned Catacomb is a free of, um, yeah, probably just considered, you know, this is a blue black land. So I have my swamp for, for Lockwing. It is possible because, I, and I think the thing that ticks me there is the, the fact that Aphergust didn't get used, that Heartless Act didn't get used, that seemed very passive. But if your plan was to cast Languish uh, and then have an empty board and have Heartless Act and Aphergust for whatever follows up, then that does make sense. Uh, that said, the Language would still be potent later. So I, I do agree that probably Trium this turn would have made more sense than the Castle. And that does lead me to believe what you put forward. Yeah, I don't think that Ray is a poor player by any means. I think it is three in the morning, though, 
where Ray is located. And uh, that is maybe not the best environment for good decision making. Yeah. It's always brutal on uh, uh, players from the APAC regions in uh, in these leagues. You have to play overnight. I mean, I've, done, I've actually done it once or twice. And uh, it, it, I think once or twice it's fine, but doing it over and over again can be really difficult. Um, but by the way, really heads up play there from Marcio to Cast Collected Company in response to the line being untapped, not allowing A for Gus to stop Collected Company. There was no untapped allowed. And knowing that there's an Embercleave in hand means that this next turn could be brutal. Probably going to have to use the Aether Gust on either a creature or on the cleave. Yeah. Yeah, because the 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 distinction, though, is that Ember Cleave um, wouldn't allow Clofus to attack in, but that's already presuming that there's no interaction. And I think in Marcel's spot, you want to presume that there's interaction because if there's none, you're, you're likely just going to win. With Ray Sato now down to nine and a board presence... I would play as if Ray had an Aether Gust because, you know, if if there's no Aether Gust, you're just probably you're gonna win this game, some in some manner, uh, and there's no need to take risks of that nature. So you can play around the card pretty freely. Play like you're a winner. We might still see Embercleave uh, because it is decent in play. <laughs> you can equip it and and deal a lot of damage, but. Um, this would allow Ray to untap with Languish next turn. I think from Marcia's perspective, the question is, how can I deal the, the most damage this turn? Because with Clofus in play, you want to maximize the amount of damage you're dealing. Because then Clofus can easily lock out the game. But to do to have Clofus lock out the game, you need your opponent to be at less life because Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, is in their deck and can eventually show up. There is an opportunity to animate Clothis, make it so she is not just an enchantment, but it would be playing the Lanorels and Scavenging Ooze before combat, uh, rather than using the Ember Cleave. Using the Ember Cleave is the strongest way to line up damage during this turn, and Clothis will become a creature when it is on the battlefield, if it resolves, but of course we know about this Aether Gust. One thing I'd actually like Marshall to do here with the attack is not actually cast Embercleave. Just let Ray do something. I mean, right now, Ray Sato is going down to four. You don't need to do anything. You could cast Embercleave on the Pelt Collector, but you know that this Aether Gust is likely to come. You can just play Embercleave afterwards. Oh, and there we go. Aether Gust coming, trying to stop five damage from the Kazandu Mammoth. And here's Ember Cleave saying, oh, well, I'll just go ahead and uh, attach myself to the Pelt Collector. Now the Pelt Collector is a 4-4 with Double Strike and Trample. Yeah. Uh, yeah, allowing uh, Marcio to essentially put uh, Ray Sato down to 4. That said, though, we have a Salt Eye player with Nissa who shakes the world and, uh, and a Sweeper, but any Haze creature pretty much locks it up, and you're going to have to deal with Clovis eventually. Yeah, there's a lot of little bits of removal in hand, but really need to start getting some life gain and big creatures out. I'm thinking about Hydroid, Crisis, Oro, any of those would be helpful on the battlefield. Yeah. However, Hydroid, Crisis got boarded out. Oro is pretty much what Ray Sato needs, and even then it's not great because you're gaining free life. But actually might have enough mana to play it and escape it right away. Um, there is free blue, and we probably will have enough green, so... Yeah, really need zero time in nature's wrath. You got to play this languish here, get rid of this board, and uh, keep heartless act up, and uh, have Nissa make a land, and just hope you draw into Uro Titan of nature's wrath. I don't think there's another card that really does it. So uh, definitely leave black mana untapped is the the only thing that's important. You don't want to. It, it's not good, obviously, against Gruul Spe Spellbreaker, but you do get to sacri you know, block that one. Actually, uh, with Ember Cleave, you wouldn't because Clofus could exile a land, maybe. Oh, but do you see that Ramanop Ruins? <laughs> Ramanop yeah. Ruins able to deal another two damage to face and close out this game. Yeah, yeah. We might see Marcia do it on upkeep just to play around Till's End uh, the most, but yeah, don't make a mistake. Marcia hasn't forgotten about that ability. Rosado saying good. 
game, I think giving Marcio the opportunity to close this out rather than just conceding, well, actually playing the game to the end, and here come the ruins. Oh, I like this. oh, oh, I love this. Race Auto saying, you do not get to kill me. I get to kill me. Activating Castle Lock Twain and taking three damage. Yeah. I, yeah, I thought this kind of played out how it was supposed to, honestly. I, I uh, Reisato's build, not really designed for the Gruul match 